Oh, me? Oh, no, thank you. I don't, I don't want communism. Brewskies. All right, hey y'all, this is Scott with Paladin Tower Tactics. Today, this video is gonna be about different ways to carry while you are in your vehicle. Um, so primarily, we're gonna be discussing the differences between appendix carry and strong side carry, and we'll also get into uh, off of your body type carry, whether it's mounted in a vehicle or in a bag, something like that, all right? So stay with me, hope you guys enjoy the video. A very popular uh, thing to talk about in the training world, which is fighting from your vehicle. What are you going to do in terms of defending yourself or your family uh, from your vehicle? If you're carrying every day, what positions, uh, what's kind of legality behind it, things like that. So first off, the piece of advice I'd give you is if you know that there's going to be a protest there where they are, uh, and the reason I'm saying this is obviously because of the rioters and these thugs that are um, cowardly that are dragging uh, people out of their vehicles and accosting them. They're only doing that because they have numbers. They're, they're cowards when they're by themselves. So this mob mentality where they're saying that it's okay to just behave this way, uh, that's kind of what I'm speaking to right now. You know that there's going to be one of these events where you're headed. Don't go. There's absolutely no reason for you to go. There's nothing that's important enough for you to go and risk being in a deadly force situation. It's not worth it. Uh, so if you know there's something going on there, uh, avoid the situation. Now, if you get stuck or for whatever reason, it just happens that you get you know, stuck in a place where you can see that there are people blocking the road or protesting or something else like that, then try to turn around. Try to de-escalate. try to get away. The last thing that you wanna do is be sitting in a traffic jam and say to yourself, well, they shouldn't be in the road anyway, or I'm just gonna run them over. Um, you're not going to win that court fight. It's, it's not gonna happen. The courts are not gonna side with you. If you're stuck there, and I've had a, a few friends of mine who are truck drivers ask me, hey, hey Scott, what do, I mean, what do I do if I'm in one of these traffic jams they're trying to gain entry into my vehicle? Well still apply the same legal standard of the justified use of deadly force for self-defense with your vehicle, apply it with your vehicle that you would with any other weapon, with your handgun, with uh, a baseball bat. Well, and that standard is that you are in imminent danger of losing your life or being seriously injured or somebody else was. Therefore, you are justified in using that deadly force. Make sure that you know the laws in your area as far as self-defense goes. You don't want to uh, create exigency in a situation where you're saying, well, I had to, had to run them over. I had to use my firearm. Um, and what I mean by creating exigency, as an example, a lot of police officers are getting in trouble nowadays because they're, uh, they're standing in front of a suspect vehicle and then they're saying, well, he tried to run me over and so I was justified in, in gunning him down. Now, what the courts are saying, the courts are actually not siding with those officers, with those departments. What they're saying is you created that exigency. And so that is something that, that standard you can take and apply to yourself as a self-defender and understand that basically if you, uh, if you get offended by what somebody says, or if you're like, oh, I'm afraid because this crowd was surrounding me and blah, blah, blah. Um, and then you just hit the gas and go for it, you're going to have a huge uphill fight in court. They're not gonna look at you favorably. Uh, you're not going to be seen as, um, as somebody who is, is justified in using self-defense, using your vehicle in self-defense. How you carry your firearm presents some pretty unique challenges to how, um, how you're gonna actually get the gun into the fight. I'll kind of show you my setup for the range. First steel target is right here. We got a good backstop. Second steel target right there. Um, so basically I'm just going to kind of put myself on a shot timer and let you guys see uh, from the different carry positions 
how fast we're, uh, we can get the gun out and into the fight from those positions. So we'll talk about the appendix position, we'll talk about the strong side position, mounted in the vehicle, or if it's in a bag or something else like that. Um, then uh, how fast can I get that out and what are some of the pros and cons of, of, of those things? So as a baseline, right. I'll just show you what I'm typically at from strong side and from appendix, and then we'll put it on a shot timer when we get in there. All right, so one, three, nine. All right, and that was a one, three, four. So I'm gonna switch over to appendix. And again, I don't really train appendix, but I know it can be a whole lot faster. It may probably be around the same time for appendix. So that was a uh, 137. Like I said, I think it would probably be around the same time. All right, so that was a 128. So that kind of gives you guys an idea of where I'm at uh, from a non-seated position, from a standing position. The key takeaways are gonna be for your carry position that you wanna choose, uh, whether you're inside the vehicle, outside the vehicle, uh, pros and cons for, for all of them. Uh, the main thing with appendix is I think is the most accessible whether you're standing or whether you're in a seated position. I think if you draw from it consistently, there might be some people that disagree with me on that. Um, if you are uh, consistently practicing from the appendix position, it's very, very easy to get to in a seated position. Um, there are some cons, however, as far as, uh, as, far as sitting down with that appendix uh, carry position, namely, uh, you being mindful of your muzzle as you are presenting out on target, whether the threat is not so much of a big deal if it's if the threat is in front of you, uh, it's it is kind of a big deal for any carry position. If uh, but especially appendix, if you're presented a threat to uh, your left or to your right. Was a one six one. That was a one eight eight. I kind of cheated on that. Went one handed. But I was a little. I was a little concerned about where my muzzle was when I came out, and so instead of going two hands, I went straight over. So let's try that one again. That was a one eight eight. One nine seven. So, I think the biggest difference on both of those shots, or at least just digesting it right now in front of you guys, is if I'm going to turn to my strong side, as I'm sitting in the vehicle, I'm going to have to shift my entire body, and then I'm going to have to present out. The draw, I think, is is pretty quick. It's just getting around all the obstacles within the vehicle. You've got this steering wheel that's right here. You obviously have areas that you don't want to shoot uh, as you're presenting out. Um, but the principles that I'm kind of ex that I'm using to to get a good safe draw while it's from a seated position, especially from the Penix, is I'm basically when I gain access, I'm doing the exact same thing that I would do standing. I pull this thing high, and I'm basically going into a retention position right off the bat. That allows me to rotate over safely without flagging my leg or anything else like that. Now you might say, well, oh, you're pointing, your, pointing the gun at your leg as you're drawing it out or whatever. I think that's inevitable. And I think that um, you can mitigate the amount of risk you're exposing your to, yourself to by immediately coming up into that retention position and then turning to face and draw on your target. So. A lot of you guys are probably like, oh, this is terrifying. Please don't shoot yourself in the nuts. I agree. I'm, I'm with you. So um, I don't carry Penix often, um, but when I do, I don't shoot myself in the nuts. All right, so from strong side, basically I've got another unique challenge in that 
I have got to gain access to this pistol and there's a couple things that are gonna hold me back. First off, most of the time, guys who are carrying, guys or gals who are carrying strong side, they're carrying it way back at the 4.30, 5 o'clock position. Uh, and basically, as you're sitting down, obviously you're sitting on your gun almost. So in order for you to gain access to it, a technique would be to lean forward and grab the steering wheel. Uh, grab the steering wheel, and that way you can complete a one-handed draw. So same thing. I pull it forward, I can pull the gun up high, rotate to the retention position, and then turn to face your target. It's a lot more movement uh, to use the, the predominant buzz phrase, biomechanical efficiency is not so good while we're sitting down. All right. So, 285, and a couple things that I think we could do better, like hit the target. The first one was a 249. One thing that I'm not doing that I should be doing is using my legs to basically drive my hips inside of the vehicle. Uh, I know you can't see it from where the camera is right now, but just being able to uh, use the floorboard and the door as leverage to drive your hips into that target. Still, clearly way slower than uh than the appendix from that side um all right so let's try the other side i think this is gonna be even slower two five four as far as a pro goes with appendix it is significantly faster uh drawing from appendix and engaging your targets uh, let's try a different type of carry. I'll show you guys real quick. Um, basically, carrying in this 5.11 bag, and I've got a Kydex holster, Velcro, I don't know if you can see that, Velcroed in there. Um, and uh, we'll basically just see what we can do uh, gaining access to it. It's a 189. So uh, from inside the bag, not bad. All right, so 164, huge advantage. Obviously, you guys just saw me. I can reach right in the bag, bring it out one handed, and then my presentation is very, very quick from right there. So um, not a bad way to go. Here, depending on that as our primary gun. The downside of that that I can see just off the bat, kind of thinking out loud again, is if we get into an accident or if we get to the point where we are separated from our vehicle, basically that gun is married to our vehicle. It's not married to our body. So if I have to bail from inside of a vehicle, my preference would be that I have a firearm on me because what I've been taught in, in my training and experience is that vehicles are bullet magnets. If for whatever reason you cannot get out of the area with your vehicle, you've lost that mobility, then the best thing to do is to bail out of it because people shoot at vehicles. That's just what they do. It's the biggest target they've got. They know that uh, instinctively in their mind that vehicles carry people and so therefore, they're gonna start shooting at vehicles. That's why we call them bullet magnets. Um, so whether that's from a military standpoint, law enforcement standpoint, or civilian context, that holds true. Uh, so a lot of times you're gonna wanna ditch the vehicle and regain mobility uh, outside of that bullet magnet. Well, if you don't have the mental wherewithal to snatch that gun out of the holster as it's mounted to your uh, mounted to your dash or mounted inside your bag or something else like that, you're kind of out of luck um, as far as, especially if you're taking rounds and you're trying to dive out of that vehicle where you're stuck. Um, so maybe a, a solution to that problem would be have two guns on you. Have one in the bag, have one, or excuse me, one in the bag mounted in the vehicle somewhere and then have the other one that you primarily carry on your person, on your body. Anyway, I hope you guys like this video. If you guys want training, you can look me up on Eventbrite at uh, Paladin Tower Tactics. My classes are primarily in Middle Tennessee. 
We really appreciate the business. Um, and uh, thanks for watching. Um, I had fun shooting this video. And enjoy your day. Be safe.